I M H O Talk Show. Family, family, thank you for joining us for yet another beautiful Sunday. It's beautiful because you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, Sir Charles, Miss Max, Razor, and we are 101 Jam Charles, who's number one for RB, hip hop, and classics. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a great show, as as always. I mean, it's what you come to expect, right? From I M H O. And, uh, you know, we are going to be joined today, bottom of the show, uh, but none other than our friends from over at Let's Talk. For those that don't know, you're going to be introduced. And for a pleasure, it's, uh, you know, Charlottesville has, has a public access channel station. And um, these ladies are doing great work uh, when it comes to conversation for the community and from their perspective. So can't wait for them to join us. Middle of the show, there's a stage play going on. Uh, upcoming soon you know jefferson always has great stuff going on but uh abby yo-yo abby yo-yo is a stage play coming up that's directed by some locals jess harris xavier taylor they're going to be uh, joining us today as well family um so you know and you know we never know what me miss max may be up to with you know what we may be talking about today but uh you know uh, we, we listen to you we listen to you so it's it's, it's definitely we hear what you want to what you want us to talk about and so hey you got to stay tuned never know what headlines we may hit for you with the ass max may be so yes indeed yes indeed but without further ado we're gonna get into this show today because we are joined by some of my favorite folks when especially when it comes to this time of the year <laughs> <laughs> bringing uh arts um to the area uh like no others talking about my friends Ilya and Jody from over at the Virginia Film Festival. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us again for this 2023 season. Charles, thanks for having us on. Always look forward to being part of this show. Yes, indeed. We definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. Um, So, you know, for those who, who just may not be as familiar for whatever reason, let's uh, go ahead and, and, and introduce yourself. So, you know, Jody is a state boy. If people don't know the face, they definitely know the name, right? I know Ilya has just been here a couple years now. Um, so go ahead and, and give, you know, the listeners a rundown of, of what it is you guys do and then how that we're going to lead right into this year's 2023 Virginia Film Festival. Well, sure. I'm Jody Kilbasa. I serve as Vice Provost for the Arts at the University of Virginia. And, and also this is my 15th year serving as the director of the Virginia Film Festival, which is one of Charlottesville's very largest, in fact, Central Virginia's largest cultural events, happens each and every fall. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on. Uh, my name is Ilya Tovis. I'm the senior programmer for the Virginia Film Festival. Um, as you mentioned, just a couple of years in and really excited to be here in my role alongside Jody and some of our guest programmers uh, helping to shape and curate the program of films and conversations that happen during the festival october 25th through 29th october 25th through 29th thank y'all thank y'all once again for joining us um and it, yeah it, the you know I, I must say like it seems like you guys uh you know get better and better each year especially when when it comes to the to the presentation before we even get into the films like tell us the work that goes into the actual kickoff right so so when when you when you start planning the way that you're going to reach out to the community right you know to especially to our to our listeners and whatnot i'm like what what goes into that planning when it comes to i'm um, like how you want to reach uh, the community to get them excited for another year of the film festival I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. There's a lot of work. Um, there's a big team that, or it's not that big, but it's uh, more than just the two of us. I'll say that. Uh, we work throughout the year in terms of finding the films, making sure that we can position them and have the studios and distributors and press agents, everyone that we work with, allow us to have this great program. In terms of getting it out to the community, we then work with um, organizations, uh, different departments in UVA, different nonprofit and arts organizations throughout Charlottesville, community interest groups, to make sure they're aware of the program. Um, we have some 70 guests coming in, and on top of them, mm -hmm. some 70 moderators um, and other folks from the community at large they're helping to lead the conversations and help us spread the word. So it is, it's a big undertaking. I'm um, really happy to be part of the fabric of Charlottesville and larger community here. Nice, nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. And, um, and Ilya, I, I definitely want to, you know, give you kudos because uh, we, when I met you last year, um, you know, like you definitely Jody's right here, man. Jody, you've been doing a good job before. Don't get me wrong. Like, but it seemed like last year, you know, things is kicked up a major notch. So, you know, give, give, 
give Ilya his kudos. Well, I, I have no problem <laughs> uh, giving Ilya props for the work that, that he's done in uh, last year and this year, his second year with the Virginia Film Festival. Mm -hmm. You know, for several years before that, um, Ilya was also a guest programmer. Uh, he was with the Washington Jewish Film Festival in Washington, D.C., but also mm -hmm. programming a series of films for us uh, every year for several years before that. That's how we got to know him and, and uh, the skills that he was able to bring to the table. So um, uh, he's living here in Charlottesville, part of the Virginia Film Festival now, and we're, we're yeah. thrilled to have him. And I think you're <laughs> absolutely right. He's helped elevate our game. That's right. That's right. That's right. So let's so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, You know, like before we dig into to any of the particular uh, sort of themes of, of it. Right. Um, You know, go, go ahead and give us the overview of sort of the overall theme this year. You know, in, um, you know, as far as the thought process that went into it um, you know, in, in the selection of, uh, of this year's lineup. You know, I think each and every year. Um, we want to stress that this is Charlotte Hills Film Festival. It's it's a um, a festival for the community. It's about the community. We also mm -hmm. we always have local and regional filmmakers that are involved uh, that are presenting films. Um, I think you're going to have one of those Tanisha that's, Hudson on air right. with you uh, a little later in the show. Um, so it's about bringing the community together in a uh, celebration and an exploration of of great films, mm -hmm. the art of filmmaking, storytelling. Um, you know the great things about this film the film festivals we you know we're able to screen well over 120 films during the festival mm. and so imagine it's a real broad canvas that we can paint on we can explore a lot of different themes we can open windows up into other communities and cultures and see mm. what's similar and also celebrate hopefully what's different about those uh, those cultures so a lot of great international films um the black excellence this program yes, uh, yes. program is really really strong this year um and i think that this is far and away the most diverse lineup of artists that we've ever been able mm. to assemble in okay. one festival it's really an extraordinary lineup of artists and you know that's that was a bit of a challenge this year we had a writer's strike up yeah, until about uh, yeah. two weeks ago that got resolved but the actors are still striking so yeah. uh yet we somehow managed to land up upon some really significant people coming in and uh, Ilya, you know please chime in what do you what do you feel about that Absolutely. I mean, I, I want to just go to your first question in terms yes, of the themes. Um, so the festival, we bring together um, really the, the top films that are contemporary and current um, out of the 120 some films that are in the program. We only have uh, one that is out and we can talk about that one a little bit later. But all of these are brand new films they are not yet in theaters. Some of them will never be in theaters. Uh, we're talking about international films, student films, animation. Um, and we don't consider ever a single theme, or at least not in many years we haven't. Um, we're really looking for a cross-section, intersectionality of different series. So Jody already hit on, we have a series called Black Excellence that's celebrating achievement in African-American culture, mm -hmm. history, um, et cetera. Uh, we also have a series on indigenous cinema of the Americas, a series on um, nature and environment, a series on Korean cinema and the series go on. Um, and that's really the way that we conceive of it, not a singular way in, but really mm -hmm. uh, making sure that the festival is representative and diverse of new voices and perspectives out there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, no, you're, you're good. Yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah, she can share with me. So we're good. Yeah, yeah. Miss Max is in the building in the booth. Snuck in like that. You got your superwoman cape on and everything. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, indeed. So, um, again, we are joined by Virginia Film Festival. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as Jody and uh, said, and we're also joined by Ilya, we are going to have Tanisha Hudson on and just a few to, uh, to also plug in and, and talk about um, her her short film that that is also going to be featured this year. So, and you, you actually got uh, got Max's friend uh, coming to visit, Nikki Giovanni. You know, um, not too many people in um, in Charlottesville has Nikki on speed dial like Miss Max. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so like even when, when I when I when I look at uh, the folks that you have coming in this 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 year for for the actual in, in person and, and the, the awards that, that they're uh, receiving um, the recognitions. Uh, give us a little background on that as far as what, what went into um, the selection for for those who are being recognized and invited in person this year. Well, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it was a little challenge this year to navigate because, um, you know, we were smack dab in the middle of a writers and actors strike, um, mm -hmm. which immediately meant that writers and actors were not available to us. And of course, the writers resolved 
of their strike a couple of weeks ago, but the actors are still um, negotiating. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as a result of that, we don't have that many actors coming in, but we've landed some really exceptional directors coming in, some exceptional artists like John Batiste and Nikki Giovanni, who are just crazy amazing yeah, um, yeah um so uh you know i feel good about where we landed you know we're opening the festival um with a film directed by bradley cooper starring bradley cooper and carrie mulligan that looks at the um life and career of leonard bernstein cultural icon celebrated american composer mm -hmm. um uh and we have the makeup artist who's won two academy awards kazu hero coming in and i think Ilya mm -hmm. can expound upon this as well one of the things that we want to celebrate uh and take a look at is people who are responsible for making the films mm -hmm. and uh kazu hero has um, won two academy awards for his work on the film bombshell but also on the darkest hour about Winston Churchill that mm -hmm. um, uh, was out several years ago, a uh, celebrated makeup artist, and he was responsible for all the makeup um, uh, in this film. And uh, we're going to recognize him with the Virginia Film Festival Craft Award on that opening night um, and, awesome. and also have a discussion with him immediately following the film. Um, yeah. Second night, and you know, I'll turn this over to, to Ilya, um, uh, we have this amazing film called American Fiction. Um, mm -hmm. Ilya saw this at Toronto. Toronto, and I'll let you take it from here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, that continues along the award conversation as well. So we have seven awards in total. And as Jody mentioned, we're looking to give them to really a range of people that are behind the screen, in front of the screen. Oftentimes we focus on one or two names in a given production. It might be mm -hmm. the director, it might be a star actor, but anyone that sat through the list of credits for a studio picture, I mean, it goes on for minutes. And that's because you have mm -hmm. oftentimes yeah. literally yeah. hundreds of very successful artists that are pouring their heart into this work and mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we're spotlighting all of them so on the second night mm -hmm. as jody mentioned we are very fortunate to be screening american fiction which won the people's choice award at the toronto international film festival and i bring this up because if there's one award statistically that is the most correlated to oscar success of any film festival award it's exactly that one if you look over the mm -hmm. last 10 or 15 years whatever film like green book for example that ends up winning the people's choice award in toronto mm -hmm. uh, is uh, almost always nominated for best picture frequently wins best picture at the oscars so if you're beginning to fill out those office brackets um, <laughs> we're starting to give it some thought it's, it's worth checking out american fiction and there's many other reasons it's worth it this film is at the same time incredibly poignant and serious and thought-provoking and mm -hmm hilarious it'll have you rolling in the aisles um this is a film by core jefferson whose name might not immediately ring out but his credits will so he's making the jump and we're giving him the breakthrough director award because he's making a jump from writer director and as a writer he was behind shows like succession and watchmen he was nominated for and won uh, emmys uh, for these mm. productions mm -hmm. and he's made the jump into the director's chair uh taking on percival everett's book erasure in making american fiction and it centers on jeffrey wright in perhaps one of the top two or three performances of his whole career one of our mm. great actors and he's playing a african-american professor who uh is yep. an author deemed quote unquote not black enough um mm. and he constantly is pushing his face that he's sort of not black enough he's got a great quote in the book says i'm black and i write books how much more black can i be mm. um but they're just not getting picked mm. up by literary industry he's getting incredibly frustrated with this and mm. in one night of just taking it all out almost as a form of protest mm -hmm. he writes this book and this manuscript is chock full of every single horrible ugly stereotyping and think about minority culture and black culture mm -hmm. stuffs it all in there forces his literary agent to send it out and you might guess what happens next um it's not thrown back in his face and said what is what is this but instead, mm -hmm. Hollywood comes calling, the agent gives them a huge deal. They say, this is exactly what we've been looking for this whole time. Um, you know, thank you for channeling this voice. Um, and he's caught in this sort of weird place because he actually needs the money. He needs the claim. He wrote the book under a pseudonym. And he's mm -hmm. trying to skate between sort of commodifying, commodifying um, the black image and the minority image mm -hmm. and staying true to himself. Right. Um, yeah. And it's just so sharply written. It's incredibly mm -hmm. funny, but it's also incredibly thought provoking skewers this whole idea of how we treat black and minority culture um and mm -hmm. core jefferson will be on hand as i say the writer and director and producer of this film to have a conversation awesome. with Bilal qureshi from npr on stage after the screening should be great oh that, that is awesome that's good stuff hey, you know when when i when i'm hearing you saying that as well well first that that storyline rings so true right um so yeah so family that's definitely one to check out uh you know like when it comes to 
uh, sort of, you know, staying, staying true to, to, to who you are, but also succeeding. You know what I mean? Like uh, I know within the African American community, that is that is something that is like that is a consistent sort of balance. It's 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 a balancing act. So that that definitely sounds intriguing, intriguing story. But as you were talking, it made me think. Um, like, it, it, has it become easier, or or is it still a sell to get folks here to Charlottesville? Like you know, do when when, when it comes to the folks, like, is the Virginia Film Festival like you know? To that magnitude, because I believe it is, but you know, but I'm on the inside looking out, right? Of of, of you know, folks saying, "Oh yeah, Virginia Film Festival, I got to be there, wouldn't miss it." Or is it still a sell to bring people to Charlottesville, Virginia? You know, I don't think I don't think it's a hard push. I don't think it's a um, you know a sell to make mm -hmm. that happen. But you know, I got to say that you know every year the last couple of years, you know, we're hit with a curveball, right? You've yeah. got um, uh, you know, going all the way back to 2017, um, we had the events of August 11th and 12th leading up to the festival. We were fortunate that Spike Lee came in that year because yeah. he, he actually wanted to have a dialogue here in Charlottesville with our community and, and that was great and that was a lucky break um, but then you get hit with a pandemic and nobody wants to travel in at that point. Right, right. Um, you're just lucky to try and get get audiences we're, audiences back as we were coming out of that. Um, um, uh, you know, this year I think we've seen a real sea change. Um, um, you know, our films are, are filling up, um, they're selling out mm -hmm. uh, really, really sense that the audience Audience is ready to come back and uh, again you know the curveball this year were the strikes right mm, and you got to yeah, kind of deal yeah. with that and navigate that whole landscape and yet again we turned up some amazing artists i mean mm -hmm. it it's mm -hmm. fun to me um and again you know Ilya, I'll, I'll point to you to talk a little bit about space race um uh but we have one of the very first black astronauts who also mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. to be drafted in the nfl and also happens to be a uva alum returning with a film called space race mm -hmm. and and to me it it's really kind of fun to see the diversity of this lineup where you have just um this amazing cultural icon and nick Giovanni mm -hmm. coming in, who is a poet, and you've got an astronaut, and then you've got somebody like Ava DuVernay, exactly. um, yeah. uh, who's extraordinary, um, and and talk about a coup and having her come in uh, with the U.S. premiere of her film Origin, and then you close the festival with John Batiste, and mm -hmm. I saw this film in Telluride just a little mm -hmm. over a month ago. Um, it was just blown away yeah. um, by his humanity um, mm -hmm. in the film. Also his musical talent, which yeah. is sheer genius. Yeah. Um, he just mm -hmm. really is amazing. He's classically trained. He comes from music yeah. royalty uh, uh, in terms of his family, um, uh, all, all mostly being musicians right, from right. New Orleans. Um, but also just um, the humanity um, uh, that you realize uh, during this film, which is about him wanting to create an American symphony based on African-American and Native American sounds, mm -hmm. um, but also... Early on, the film takes a bit of a turn because his his soon to be wife is is diagnosed with the reoccurrence of leukemia. So it becomes mm -hmm. a very personal struggle for mm -hmm. both of them as they work for her to overcome her illness, how it impacts them, all as he's working on this new American symphony. He's going to be here to talk about that film along with the director, mm -hmm. Matthew Heineman, who's been nominated for an Oscar. But he's also going to perform on the stage at the Paramount. So, you know, we have this, I was going to ask. This. Uh, yeah, we've got this. <laughs> <laughs> just amazing lineup yeah. of talented artists, mm -hmm. not just filmmakers, but artists who right, all right. have very unique voices and perspectives, um, mm -hmm. um, all in this amazing cocktail that's going to happen yeah. over five days right here in Charlottesville. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so quick question um, in the same vein of um, trying to sell people to come to Charlottesville and you talk about curveballs from a more broader sense, but I'm thinking about bringing it more locally, those issues that you, those curveballs that happen locally, right? Sure. So you have to figure that in choosing your films and in um, being associated or part of UVA, then the pol there's an element of politics, right? Um, that may come into the type of films or individuals that you're reaching out to. And then the narrative of, of individuals um, thinking Charlottesville just isn't what it used to be. Right. And, and being regretful, maybe that they purchase a home here or set up roots here or what have you for the various things that have happened in this community. Um, and, and then the issues in terms of let's just uh, like homelessness that the city is currently dealing with or um, police community in, um, relations that 
um, is also a big issue that we're dealing with locally. So in in bringing that that um, your response more locally, how then do people respond or what are the type of curveballs, so to speak, that you're dealing with when you're reaching out to people and saying, hey, come to Charlottesville <laughs> where we're dealing with all these issues that you're probably hearing about and talk to us or show your film or what have you? Well, I, I mean, quite frankly, for people who care about issues like that, I would hope that would be not a deterrent, but an opportunity to have a platform to come in. Um, um, I think Ava DuVernay is a perfect example of that. I think that's somebody who wants to engage in a dialogue with our community. Mm -hmm. um, and I would agree uh, with that, but then there's obviously a lot of other people that would say, maybe not so much for different well I, and i'm sure that's the case i mean mm -hmm. there's you know we're certainly not the only uh community um in our country that's struggling with many of the issues right. that you talked about um san francisco portland uh, uh uh you name it there's 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 a lot of uh urban areas out there and i wouldn't even say that we're really that big of an urban area right but nonetheless um all the things that you mentioned are problems throughout the country um you know i think sometimes um uh, because of all the focus on what happened on August 11th and 12th, this seems to be, you know, uh, uh, an attractor, attractor for a lot of negative publicity, some of which can be justified, right? But I don't know if it's, you know, worse or better or indifferent in terms of these issues happening across the nation. Um, there's certainly issues that sometimes we have films that are able to touch upon these issues and we get to engage in a, in a, in a dialogue. Not all the time. Sometimes the films that we screen just aren't reflecting those issues. Uh, but more often than not during the festival, we have a couple films that do touch upon a lot of these issues. And to me, that's one of the great benefits of the festival is again, it provides a platform to, to engage the community in a discussion and somebody might, you know, you might not go if you're just publicizing a discussion or a lecture or whatever the case may be on one of the issues that you mentioned of homelessness or, um, um, uh, you know, uh, a, a sort of <laughs> uh, overbearing community policing, whatever the case may be, people might not show up to that. But very often they'll go see a film. And if the film's covering those issues, they're pretty comfortable in that format, having a discussion afterwards. So I kind of see that as a great way to bring the community to engage them around those those areas i also have to say as somebody that's relatively new i only moved here two years ago um so i'm not deeply steeped i'm certainly excited to get to know this town and really enjoyed living here um what the perspective i bring to it and uh, just individually is that at a lot of festivals um because because that is somewhere where i have had experience i've worked at uh, many of the top festivals and regional festivals um, and roles throughout the last two decades um, a lot of festivals will put on what we call sort of quote-unquote issue-driven films, um, discussing some of these topics, and they don't always find an audience because it feels like a lecture. Um, and something that I've truly seen here is I think people want to engage with these issues. Some of them are difficult to deal with, like you're saying. Um, they're not necessarily all entertaining and fun, and I'm going to show up to the theater and put my worries aside. Um, but I'll give a few examples from this year's program that I think relate to what you're talking about, and I'm happy to hear differently or um to talk to these points so jody's mentioned ava duvernay a few times um she's coming in here with a u.s premiere of her film origin which uh what origin does is it takes a look at isabel Werklerson, the pulitzer um winning writer she recently wrote a book called origin the history of our discontents which deals with what goes into the making of racism and what the way that ava duvernay captures this story because it's quite dense um it's quite intense and it would actually be really hard for a filmmaker that didn't have the talent that Ava DuVernay does to bring this to the screen. And the way that she humanizes this story is she follows Isabel Wilkinson's personal life and her decision to write this incredibly challenging book, which a lot of people, academics and others, told her, do not write this. Um, she got serious pushback. Um, and she felt like she had to write it. And the reason she felt like she had to write it were a few specific incidents in world events. And one of them was Trayvon Martin, um, and the tragic incidents there, and one of the other events, and the reason she's chosen Charlottesville Open is the events of August 11th and 12th in Charlottesville. Um, so she specifically said, I know this is still an open wound, and this still needs to be talked about, and this can't just be cast off as you know a minor part of our history. It's not that to her, and she wanted to come and talk about it in this community. Switching gears a little bit, and we'll come back to that one, I'm sure, but um, we have an award that we always give to a local filmmaker, 
And this year we're giving it to Ricardo Preve, who's coming in with Sometime Somewhere, which is not just a local filmmaker that happened to make a movie based here. But what he's talking about is issues of Latino migration and specifically the welcome and sometimes lack thereof. The Latino migrants are receiving a Charlottesville film is entirely shot here. Um, and it deals with some really thorny issues. And I think it does it honestly and it does it with beauty and it lets these people talk uh, about their real life experiences, some of which are very hard, including the welcoming here. Uh, but that's something that we wanted to uplift. And again, it's not just us uplifting it. I think we're finding and we're already seeing and just the interest in this film that people want to talk about these issues here. We have films like For the Taking from Danny Wagner is another local filmmaker, recent grad from UVA that actually takes on some of the housing issues here. And it's done in the form of a comedy. Um, I'm not saying that it's, you know, hard hitting documentary, but at the center of this comedy is actually the lack of affordability. And especially during COVID, uh, trying to figure out how to uh, scratch together and pay your rent check. Um, and so I, I think there are ways into these themes. Uh, the shootings of last November are uh, something else that dealt with in our local shorts program. And I know you're going to have on Tanisha Hudson, who's in that same program with a different film. Um, we have a current student who is very good friends with some of the football players telling an incredibly um, powerful and poignant tale. And, and again, some of these are not fun stories, not the kind of things you think I'm going to go to the theater and just laugh. But here you have an audience and a community that is receptive to having those conversations catalyzed by the screenings. And I think that is really incredible and should be celebrated. You know, there's one thing I want to quickly add. Um, it's not my role or Ilya's role to lead these discussions. It's our role to provide the platform for the discussions to happen. And that's what we try to do. We're not necessarily experts. We haven't directly experience some of these issues from time to time. We're certainly aware of them. We certainly care about them. But by screening these films and having the artists and, and the people who are directly involved in the making of the films or subject matter of the films themselves, you can really start to engage the broader community. Um, and so that, that's essentially what the festival does. Hopefully it brings that community together to explore these themes. Yeah, and I, I would say no matter how you, um, you know, uh, broach it as, as long as the the point is made right you know um so like if if using comedy is what it takes you know to get a story told uh if that's that's what engages the audience you know then, then by all means you know uh so I, I think i think that's great to have different perspectives and, and vantage points yeah. um and and speaking of which i know something that max you know i've mentioned every time you guys come in as well is the like the the local youth and talent um, and I noticed on that Saturday, um, you know, uh, like once again, you're going to have more family oriented production and it looks like there, there's even um, some work that's been done um, like with, with some local youth. So tell us about about the engagement of our of our youth that's interested in the in theater and film. Sure, I, I can kick this one off. Um, so we have a couple of different uh, approaches to youth. So one, we have a family centerpiece as we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, this year is with a beautiful, nearly wordless animation called Robot Dreams that has been receiving warm reception at international film festivals throughout. Um, it centers on a friendship between a dog and a robot. Um, we get separated early on. It's really about the power of friendship to oversee. And I think adults and children alike can actually learn a lot from this film. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. It's sort of easy, um, but it captures you and will have you thinking for a while afterwards. Um, and that's playing with a short film called Starling, uh, not from Pixar, but from a filmmaker that's worked at Pixar and with Pixar a lot. So the animation there is also top notch. Um, and then in terms of embracing sort of student filmmakers, we have a couple mm -hmm. of programs that I'd like to point to. We're once again working with Lighthouse Studios um, mm -hmm. and centering the shorts that their student filmmakers are making. And um, for the first time, we're also working with something called Next Generation Storytellers, which is based out of Hampton, Virginia, working with the Hampton uh, public school system. We're bringing in 26 um, of their students to experience the festival, show their work. Mm -hmm. We're giving them backstage access to do independent uh, meetings with filmmakers, uh, touring them around town. And I think it really is about supporting the next generation, generation yeah. after that. Um, and have the arts uh, sort of be a filter through which they experience the world and share their stories with the world. Yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, and um, so we we're about to bring Miss Tanisha Hudson, local hometown hero, <laughs> and uh, she is behind the Martinsville Seven story. So, but but uh, but as we bring her in though, um, you know, I like the way that the series and the themes are are, are packaged, right? Um, like it makes it, um, you know, sort of digestible. Right. Um, so what's the thought process uh, there is as is, is well, um, because like, of course, I, I can imagine it like, you know, after you put together, you know, once you package it so beautifully, it has to be something where you're like, 
man, like, well, we could have like included this topic or that topic, you know, um, like, so at the end of the day, um, like what's that thought process and that creative, um, you, you know, piece like when it comes to getting these series and themes down pat? Well, I mean, you can never a hundred percent represent right. everybody and everything. It's just impossible. Um, you know, with 120 plus films, we do a reasonable job of it, I think. And I think that part of the series that we've done, um, uh, there's some mainstays, um, uh, the Black Excellence mm -hmm. uh, program has been, you know, uh, something we've done for a number of years, Israeli Jewish films, uh, LGBTQIA plus films. Uh, there's other series that sort of have ebbed and flowed a little bit and that we continue to add on to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do is reflect the community that we live in. Um, so we're trying to make sure that we we cover that. Again, you know, it's unfortunate because there's always going to be uh, an additional series. Maybe there's always going to be somebody that that's left out. But we hope that, you know, during the course of at least a couple of years, we're covering almost all the bases here uh, in Charlottesville uh, that we can represent um, all sorts of different parts of the community fully. Um, and at least that's our hope. Um, and whether they're actively engaged in the festival or not, at least some of those stories from various communities are being told and experienced by others. And I, I feel that's important, too. And we are trying over time and we've made some inroads to, you know, reach out to really, really diversify our audiences and bring people in that might not think this festival has been for them. Mm -hmm. um and 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 uh i saw a lot of strides for it last year it was interesting just to take a look at the audiences um they seem more diverse they seemed younger um so that felt good so maybe maybe there was something that happened during the pandemic and maybe time of you know the program changes we've made to better reflect the community are starting to gain ground and i'm hopeful for that yes indeed yes indeed well Thank you all, jo Jody, Ilya, and, and, uh, and stick with us, but we're going to take a quick break and then we'll bring in Tanisha and she can continue sort of the, uh, um, the, the discussion uh, when it comes to the Martinsville 7 film and, and, and how that fits in this year. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. I am HO family. We are joined by none other than reps from the Virginia Film Festival. The 36th annual is going on October 25th through 29th. So uh, make sure you hit the website, virginiafilmfestival.org, about how to get involved, get those tickets and all that good stuff. But stay tuned, stay tuned. We will be right back to talk with Tanisha Hudson. I am HO Talk Show. Tell a friend, tell a friend.